Hey there, welcome to the Astro Psyche. This is your weekly astrology for August 7th through the 13th. And this week we have a third quarter moon in Taurus. We have the sun and Venus coming together in the sign of Leo, marking the midpoint of Venus's retrograde process. And we have um, Jupiter and Uranus coming here too. So a lot of themes this week around really getting into the heart of the issue in our introspection process around Venusian themes of love, beauty, money, sexuality, and and self-worth, self-esteem, strong um, themes. And again, really going into the uh, the root or the deeper part of these kinds of things this week. My name is Shauna McGrath. I am a psychotherapist and astrologer, and I'm excited to share the astrology of this week with you so that we can make the most out of the energy in the astrology. So first things first is we have that third quarter moon in Taurus happening on Tuesday, August 8th. And so the third quarter moon, this is when we're in the waning phase of the lunar cycle. So think uh, waning phase is we're sort of um, in the process of wrapping things up, letting go, allowing a feeling of surrender and introspection to come in. This is also where we're uh, looking at hopefully delegating more and uh, allowing things to fall into place versus initiating um, and like really pushing forward into the external world. This is a time of going inward and the third quarter in particular. So we're probably going to be feeling this um, Sunday, moon, Monday and Tuesday leading up to the eighth is really about uh, confronting the places where we need to um, or we would benefit from letting go of something or shifting our energy so that it feels like we're doing like we're doing more with less that's kind of the the vibe the energy of this third quarter moon and especially in Taurus it's around matters of practicality and financial security uh now we also have the sun and venus coming together in leo and so um, the conjunction, this is called a conjunction when two planets come together at the same point in the zodiac. The conjunction with the sun during a retrograde of either Venus or Mercury marks the, the midway point. So we're this week midway through the Venus retrograde process. It started uh, July 22nd and it goes through until September 3rd. So I made a whole other video all about Venus retrograde and what that means. Essentially, in a nutshell, Venus retrograde is where we are looking back on and doing an introspective journey, exploring our relationship to love, to relationships, how it is that we show up in relationship, who we are in relationship, as well as themes around our finances, our money, uh, self-worth, self-esteem how we find our value and worth as, as a divine human being here in this life. Um, and Venus is also about beauty and aesthetics and, and sexuality and sensuality and what we find attractive and how we feel attractive. So all of those themes, right? It's a lot. Uh, so, so when Venus comes together with the sun, this is the point where Venus is at its maximum uh, invisibility because whenever a planet is so close to the sun, we can't see it because the sun is so bright. And so there's this, this energy, this symbolism of going into the light, going into consciousness. And ironically, that makes things unconscious or invisible. And so there's this interplay here of like really doing the self-reflective work and looking at trying to look at what it is that we can't see. And in that process, we go into deep introspection. And there's a lot that's happening in the background. You can think of this as kind of like a new moon time because a new moon is when the moon and the sun are conjunct. And this, what we're having this week is where Venus instead of the moon is conjunct with the sun. So it's sort of like this new beginning 
where we don't know, we can't see with our visible eye, with our conscious mind, we can't see quite yet what it is that, that is beginning, that is being initiated. Um, I'm really feeling this as like uh, crossing a threshold or crossing over um, a boundary line and it being the beginning of a new journey. And so all of that, so what does that look like? That, that I think this week, like really pay attention to your dreams, to synchronicities. Um, of course, I always want you to do that, but especially around this time, uh, notice what, notice what you're noticing, notice what comes up for you, notice um, where your attention is being drawn and notice what your psyche is trying to communicate with you. And we can do this through divination as well, like through things like astrology, tarot, et cetera. Um, the thing is, it is going to be a bit like, un, you're not going to have like a clear cut answer. It's kind of like we're feeling into what's going on. That is the nature of the sun being conjunct a planet like this. And of course, this is rooted in the sign of Leo. So really strong themes here around individual self-expression, um, being appreciated, being adored, feeling like you matter to other people and feeling like you're seen for who it is that you are, um, for who it is that you are authentically uh, in your most true way of being, not necessarily um, via like a persona or performance, et cetera. So those are all themes that may come up as well. The other piece of this equation is that Uranus is going to make a square to, or Venus is going to make a square to Uranus. And so the sun and Venus are connecting in to Uranus, which is a symbol of liberation, of unconventionality. It's a symbol of uh, breaking or restructuring or disrupting a longstanding foundational structure in our lives. And so for this reason, Uranus can kind of feel like this, this awakening, this new insight, a new impulse, a desire for freedom, a desire for um, totally changing the way that you've been doing things. Um, it's also an aspect that's highly creative and uh, highly creative and highly like, um, what's the word that I'm looking for here? Kind of like avant-garde, like really being forward thinking. And so there's an element here of, of change and, and liberation and freedom and like really uh, honoring the unique way that you connect in relationships to your creativity, to your sexuality, to your sensuality, and that there can be this like play and novelty here as well. Uranus loves play and novelty. Now, the other piece that's happening. So I know that's a lot, right? <laughs> the The other piece that's happening this week is we have Mercury making an aspect to Jupiter. So Mercury is our logical mind, uh, our ability to think and speak and to process information in a linear way. And Jupiter is our capacity for growth and expansion and um for thinking about things from another person's point of view, Jupiter is about other cultures, other philosophies. It's about thinking very deeply about things in a way that is more philosophical versus practical. Mercury is like practical thinking. Jupiter is like philosophical thinking. Uh, and so, so these are coming together in a trine because they're both in the same element. They're both in an earth sign. So Mercury is in Virgo and Jupiter is in Taurus. And I really like this for us because there's this harmony here around the way that we think and our capacity for growth and expansion and new opportunities. So I feel like this week, your mind, like your logical mind is going to be like, yes, like on fire. Like maybe um, this could be like lots of ideas. This could be um, having a big Jupiter, big, um, vision for what it is that you want in your life. And then having like a really clear, um, outline 
or maybe it's not a really clear outline, but you just have a lot of ideas. And um, sometimes Jupiter can kind of be like too much and we don't quite know what to do with it. Um, the other piece of this is that uh, Mercury and Mars are still very close together. So Mars is in this equation to our uh, enthusiasm and, and being energized and wanting to take action. So it's very interesting. We have this like Venus sun introspection, like feeling into our relationship dynamics and how we feel about ourselves, which is much more reflective. And then we have this other part here, Mercury, Jupiter, which like really wants to like do stuff and take action and to like talk about it. So it feels like there's kind of this, um, there's a lot of energy here. There's a lot of inspiration and, I would say notice where you're being called, where you're being drawn, and know that there's still so much farther to go in this introspection process. And we're at the point where we're like really moving into the depths of it this week. And then in the weeks to follow is where we'll start to have that integration process. It's kind of like... Um, if you have a practice of like meditation or um, doing artwork or music or anything where you get into a flow state, it's kind of like this week is like being in the flow state, you're being in it. And then in the weeks to follow, we're, we're like coming out of that and starting to integrate that process. Uh, so I'm curious how, I'm curious how that resonates for you and how you're doing through this Venus retrograde process. Um, and yeah, if there's something in particular on your mind, you can hold that in your awareness now as I'm shuffling the tarot. And always while, um, when we're doing any kind of divination work, astrology, tarot, et cetera, we're always kind of like holding things lightly and being curious and uh, like curious and questioning and not taking anything at face value and noticing like when you see a symbol or, or an interpretation, like how does that feel for you? Uh, what feelings are evoked, and that is information for, for you as well. Okay. Okay, let's see here. So I pulled... The Two of Swords, this is from the, the Rose Tarot deck. Okay, so Two of Swords is, is a decision point. Um, swords are about thinking, um, the thinking mind, decisions, uh, very mercurial. Usually this card for me is about, there's a, there's a decision to be made and it emphasizes using your analytical mind as well as your intuitive mind. And um, psychologically, this really feels like that um, that concept of holding a tension of the opposites where it, it's like there's this or there's that. And if neither of them feel like a clear yes, um, as much as we can sort of like holding that tension until a third uh, idea or option or something emerges. Um, now, of course, sometimes we do need to act, um, but this is kind of like, especially like the sun and the moon, there, there's a lot of polarity here. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's like, how can you hold and be more curious and that that is the pathway forward? Second card is the 10 of coins, also the 10 of pentacles. Uh, so this card is about financial abundance, security. It's like also very much about having like community and family, like maybe not necessarily family, like family of origin, but it's about having a um, 
it's about having the community support in your life in all manner of ways, not just people, but the, like that you have the resources financially, um, emotionally, spiritually, um, socially. It's like very, uh, a very supportive card, especially around um, abundance. So that is really interesting. Um, so it's like, yeah, there's something here around making a decision and then having the things that you're craving and the things too that you don't even know that you need, um, that you want at some level. Uh, and then the last card is the three of batons. This is also the three of wands. And this card is about taking a journey. It's about taking a journey. It's about having a vision for the future. And it's about like, um, it's about kind of like looking, what do I want to say here? It emphasizes having a plan, like a structure, like a, I want to use the word business outline that may or may not be right. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's kind of like about looking at where you're going and having a clear sense of where you're going. Um, in this card in particular, there's, uh, so there's a ship. And then there's also a figure that's like dreaming sort of like underneath the ocean. And so this card is also about like following the part of you that has a vision that is not that analytical kind of part, like receiving messages through your dreams or through meditations or guided journey work. So yeah, there's something, um, and I pulled all of these reversed. So that's really interesting. It, like there's like something kind of here that could mean that uh, this energy is something that's that's coming, that it's kind of like not fully fleshed out yet. Uh, so when I'm looking at this as a whole, it's like there's something that, that you're trying to decide on here. And it kind of feels like it's like an either or scenario. And I would question that. Um, anytime we feel like we're like trapped in an either or scenario, this is very Uranus too, is um, the more that we can slow things down and see what's actually going on, that's going to help us. That's going to help us get to the things that we want because the 10 of coins is about having a lot of resources at your disposal. So this is saying that like whatever it is that you're trying to figure out, there's, there's a lot of resources here and that that is available to you and that that is present for you. It's just a matter of like figuring it out. And then, um, and then that invokes a journey. So that's kind of in, like, um, this three of wands is about like, not just going on a trip or, um, or any kind of like mundane kind of journey. It's like an initiatory sort of journey, like a, like an inward journey or a spiritual journey. And I hope that doesn't freak you out, but I'm saying it's kind of like um, there is, okay, okay, this is what's coming to me now. So it's kind of like when you have your financial needs met in whatever way works for you, and that could be just um, not even financial needs, but when you have a sense of security and safety, that's when new journeys can begin and we can go deeper. And this is my experience that um, when we feel safe in, in whatever way that is for us, when we feel safe, then we can go into deeper layers um, of our psychic experience. And that it can be a little scary to like figure out how to do that, um, but that we have those resources there and that the journey is is waiting for us. Um, and that feels very connected to the Venus retrograde cycle. So I hope that you found this helpful. Um, if you enjoy my work and you're interested in working more with me, I do offer psychotherapy as well as astrology readings. You can find more on that in my website. And if you resonate with me and my work, I would absolutely love to hear from you. I am sending you lots of love and wishing you a wonderful week. Bye.